on today's episode of Gathering the Kings. You know, one thing I tell the people I talk to, there's three steps to success. And one of them, I tell them, I said, do the hard things and do them often. And I translate it for them. Do the stuff that sucks and do it a lot. And a lot of people think, you know, I get the response, Mitchell, what kind of life is that? Well, that's a life worth living. In my opinion, it's a yeah. life worth living because you're going to impact and cause that ripple effect for many, many generations. You are listening to Gathering the Kings with Chaz Wolf, featuring fellow seven, eight, and even nine figure business owners who have real battle scars from business and life, but have prevailed as the king that they are designed to be. We welcome high performing entrepreneurs to the stage in order to reveal the real of the real on what it takes to build a successful business today. We dissect the good and bad decisions they've made along the way that give a true and accurate picture of the journey of success and how you too can get there. Through this dialogue, you will learn the value of growing your network and surrounding yourself with power players and kings like today's guest. Grab your pen and notebook because we're about to dive in. What's up, everybody? I'm Chaz Wolf. This is Gathering the Kings podcast, and I'm your host. Today, I've got Mitchell Tucker here on the King stage, a man fit for a king because he's got a big old beard. My man, how you doing? I'm doing great, man. How are you? I'm good. I'm excited to have you here. I, I kind of had to hurry up and hit the recording button because this whole conversation we've been having has been so energetic, stem stemming initially from our beards, but I just think <laughs> we've got we've got a lot in common, and I think that this is going to be a great conversation. Tell us what kind of business that you got, brother. So I own a private security firm, Intact Security. We provide armed and unarmed security guard services for the whole state, bodyguard services, anything to do with physical security. And I am an author. And I speak. So I really thoroughly enjoy speaking. I have a message to share and I love getting that message out of resilience. Wow. Love it. Love it. Love it. Okay. So resilience is a big topic. Maybe we'll try to weave that into today's show resilience or even persistence. I, I think they maybe go a little bit hand in hand. I'd be curious to know your opinion on that here in a little bit, but from the starters off the top here, I want to know why, like, I know a little bit about your story. We'll get into some of the details here in a second about how you know, how you jumped off the cliff and took a leap, but <clears throat> why are you doing this, man? Like you've already had a certain level of success for all intents and purposes. A lot of people look at you as, as successful, but here you are pushing hard. Why? Right. Well, we talked about it a little bit before we started the show here and it, it's your why, you know, that that's a big aspect. And I hate that it's so cliche because anyone in the personal development niche talks about what's your why, but it's so yeah. powerful. I mean, there's, it, I'll talk about it. When your alarm clock goes off, there's a lot of times I don't want to get out of bed. And every that's day. the pops in my head, right? Yeah, every day. <laughs> and if you don't have a solid why, I can understand why it would be so confusing as to why someone would continue to push. But once you have your why, yeah. it's not confusing. It's like, yeah. of course you do it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's the it's the big brother that gives you a swift kick in the hiney, you know, when you don't want to do something. You do it anyway because you remember like, oh. Oh, no, actually, I've established a greater purpose. So what is that for you? Why, why do you wake up every day? Family. That's it for me. I mean, family is a big deal for me. I want, and I want to leave a legacy, right? I don't want to be forgotten in three generations. And I don't mean that that doesn't come from an egotistical. I want to make such a ripple, such an impact that yeah. I change lives even after I'm gone. And you can't do that working a nine to five and, and, and making average money. You just can't. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of things that go along with the building blocks, as you're referencing, resources of different kinds, money being a big one. But yeah, there's there's building blocks to legacy for sure. And it doesn't happen overnight either. So we're going to have some, some like-mindedness conversation here today on that topic as well, because I find myself being extremely legacy-driven. Do you think that that comes from you not having much growing up? And, and so therefore you want to then provide, or does that come from a different place for you? Probably comes from a different place. You know, I, I was blessed growing up. I didn't struggle. I don't have a story where I, you know, I was, I, I my parents were married. Uh, they, they're, I lost my father a few years ago. He passed away, but wow. my parents okay. together my entire childhood. They, they always provided. We were, you know, middle class. We weren't really hurting, but my family was always entrepreneurs my whole life. My father was an entrepreneur. I grew up completely uninterested. The light bulb hadn't came on, no yeah. desire whatsoever. It wasn't yeah. later on in life, and we'll get into that in my story, what flipped that switch and made me attracted to entrepreneurship. Yeah, okay. And so it it it's something a little bit that you had crumbs of, and you just want to be able to provide 
that same experience or maybe even greater, you know, because, because it, I guess, I guess what the point that I'm getting at here is that I've had a lot of people here on the show where we're probably getting 250, 260, 270 shows here. And I asked this, this question 270 times and I, I, I'm putting people in buckets, right? Like you've got your legacy guys like you and me, you've got your industry disruptors, you've got your inventors, you know, there's a couple of other buckets that people kind of fall in, but, but legacy guys, you know, there's like this, there's this play, there's this relationship play because it's obviously associated to your kids and then your grandkids and potentially even their grand or, you know, their kids. And, and that's like really far down the road, right? Like, so it's like this ultimate delayed gratification thing. Mm -hmm. Why do you, why do you work that way? Why does your brain operate that way where you're willing to do ridiculous things today that nobody else is willing to do so that four generations down the line, their life is different. Cause that's what you told me. Yeah. I believe, I guess impact is so important to me. That's just, I don't, I don't know. I guess you're just wired in a certain way. Like you said, people go in different buckets. Yeah. I just happen to be wired that way. It is so important to me that I'll, I'll do it even though it sucks. You know, one thing I tell the people I talk to, there's three steps to success. And one of them, I tell them, I said, do the hard things and do them often. And I translate it for them. Do the stuff that sucks and do it a lot. And a lot of people think, you know, I get the response, Mitchell, what kind of life is that? Well, that's a life worth living. In my opinion, it's a yeah. life worth living because you're going to impact and, and, and cause that ripple effect for many, many generations. Yeah. And uh, that's just so important to me. Yeah. Um, well, what is it, what does it look like for your grandkids? Like, what does that impact practically? Like, what does that, what does that manifest itself as in their life that you're doing now? What does that look like, you know, 30 years from now, 50 years from now? Right. Well, I think one of the issues with our society is people are so mentally weak, right? I don't want to just give generational wealth. I would, I want that for my family. I do, yeah. but I'm hoping to pass down generational mental resilience. That's, that's my number one goal. If I can pass along the wealth and, and obviously that is a goal of mine, that would be fantastic. But if I could pass down the mindset of a mentally resilient man or woman, that is vital because if you have that mentally resilient mind, if you can build mental fortitude, then they're going to yeah. be successful. They don't need my money. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I love that. Like-minded in that way as well. I'm trying to put my, my kids in situations, even now, you know, at nine, almost seven and three and, and seven months and seven months, she's, she's on the, you know, she's got it easy for right now, but soon Don't enough, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I, but you're right though. It's like, I have to curate opportunity. So I'm going to, I'm going to continue down this vein because this, I can tell it's, it's, it's deep in you and it's deep in me too. I mean, we could, we might just turn this whole show into this topic. I don't know. We'll see. But what I have found is this, is that in, in the moment of, okay, like you lived a certain way, you, you lived a certain life, your upbringing was even different than mine, but single mom, we didn't necessarily have everything that we wanted when we wanted it, but I'm at a certain place and so are you. Okay, fine. So we then get to pave a road, right? For our kids. How do you balance, or that's the right, I hate that word, but how do you, how do you like maneuver probably is maybe a better word this for your kids, what I'm about to drop. How do you give them the opportunity to experience hardship, right? Or to curate mental toughness, but allow them to stand on your shoulders because you've already figured out some stuff that they don't need to figure out and waste their time with, but you don't want to just give it to them either because then it creates weak mindset. How do you do that? No, that's a very solid point. And that's something I think about a lot. And, you know, right now, what I'm currently going through, we're building a house, right? Me and my wife, we sold our old house. We bought our dream property on this lake. We're building this beautiful home. Love but that. in the meanwhile, we're living in a camper. <laughs> Me, my wife, my two kids, and a dog in a camper. Right? Oh yeah. Now we were supposed to break ground 14 months ago, but because of COVID and all these kinds of nonsense, Delay. we broke ground today. Today, actually they're at my property right now, breaking ground. Wow. But my kids have been in a camper for 14 months. Right? And going to be for another 12. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. So now it's a big camper. It's got lots of slides. It's not something, not a tiny camper, but it's still, it sucks. It's right. A camper. And yeah. That's just a perfect example. I'm continuously reminding my kids because like, oh, I hate living in the camper. I hate the camper. This is sacrifice, son. Like yeah. th 
you're about to live in a house that is just absolutely ridiculous, Fit right? For a king. And my, like growing up, my family was entrepreneurs. I, I, I didn't really want for much, but I had, that. it's probably one reason why I wasn't interested in entrepreneurship because it was always feast or famine. One day, me and my family were eating, you know, sirloin steaks or whatever. And then we would have several weeks of beans and weenies. And I remember as a kid, it, it kind of sucking. And as I got older, I just wanted stability. Yeah. Because my dad, one of the issues is my dad was very sick. He was, he was ill my entire life. And he yeah. was given many, many life expectancies. They never expected him to live past seven years. And he was diagnosed when I was born. So oh. he made it to just a few years ago. So because of his health, income at my family was always like this. Sometimes we were great. Sometimes we were hurting pretty bad. So I didn't want that. And I, in my mind, I thought that was entrepreneurship, right? Yeah. So um, well, it is for millions, right? It didn't, but it doesn't have to be is your point, right? Right. Yeah. It doesn't have to be. And it was for me when I first started, for sure. It's rough. It is super <laughs> rough. But yep. once, once you hit that, when, you know, once you get some stability in your life, there's nothing like it. Yeah. Yeah. So your point of, of putting your, your children in a situation right now in a camper, delaying, talking about it, getting to go to the property, watching the, maybe the excavator today, or even this week, those glimpses of, of hope as then they go back to the camper, you know? <laughs> yeah. I kind of got off topic, but yeah. So it, that, and, and I, I, like my children, I make them like my oldest, he's 14, right? If he wants something, I'll buy it. He'll never want for like food, for clothing. But if you want something and you need money, okay, well, check out this book. Ed Milet just wrote, read that book. I'll give you 40 bucks, right? right? And I want you to give me a book report on it. Yep. Right? So I'm not giving my kids stuff. I'm giving them the essentials, obviously, and obviously Christmas, birthday, whatever. But sure. if they want something outside of what they need, they're going to work for it. They're going to, they're going to read. They're going to get educated. They're going to give me a book report. They're going to do something, right? Yeah, Cause yeah. I'm not going to give my, I'm just not going to hand over to my kids stuff. Yeah, exactly. so I think that well, uh, careful if he hasn't found a uh, chat GPT yet. Oh, no, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, it's funny. This is totally, you know, we're, we're, you know, off topic here, but it, it's still good. I, I mean, we're right here. We're talking about business ownership and family. And this is just where a lot of us live, whether we like, whether we realize it or not, like this is our life. Yeah. And we're balancing the same interactions relationally in our business that we do in our family, if we're being honest. And so anyway, on this quick topic, I'll be here, curious to hear your thoughts here because this chat GPT, obviously we're even using it in our process and, and it's great, but you have to, you have to embrace <laughs> those things. And yeah. so I'm even, so my, my oldest is nine. She has yet to write a book report. I mean, she's read some books and put some thoughts down and I do the same thing. And she's reading some kid success books and she jots down her thoughts about what she learned and all that stuff on that stuff. But my next topic with her was to actually show her how to use chat GPT. <laughs> I don't know. It's like, it's kind of like, feels like it's cheating, but it's like, well, wait a second. But in 20 years, you're going to need to like, I, I just feel like I, I owe it to you to like skip forward. I don't know. What do you feel about this? Well, for, the first thought that comes to head is why the heck wasn't around when we were in school? Seriously, bro. I mean, oh Cliff Notes, God. Susie in class, like that's all we had, you know? That's it. <laughs> yeah, man. I would have been such an incredible student if ChatGPT was around. But I, I think it is important to get them used to AI because it's the way of the future. My 14-year-old, though, if he found it, he would never do work ever again. So I have to kind of regulate that. He's a little uh, entrepreneur, man. Hey, you can't yeah. stop that, you know? <laughs> yeah. All right. But uh, I think it's incredible. I think it's definitely something to introduce him to because it's – I'm trying to dive in as much as I can with that because it's so vital. With the direction it's going, I, I, mean, I, saw a, I saw a little diagram online somewhere. And it showed a dot and it said, this represents the current version of chat GPT that we have now. Yep. Right? And I saw this huge dot next to it. And I mean, it's like a hundred times bigger. And it says, this is the next version that's coming out. So our minds, you think this is impressive. I think our minds are about to be completely blown away with what they got coming. Yeah. You know, it, it makes me think of some, you know, some content that I've gotten over the years from Gary V when he talks about his kids and you know, screens or technology, social media, whatever it is. And it's like, you have, I think these, especially in the entrepreneur world, I can't speak for parents who aren't business owners. I, I don't know what that's like. So for, as a business owner, as someone who's trying to curate environments, like what we're talking about, that, that teach my children certain things that are going to then lead them to be successful in whatever they choose to do. 
I, there has to be some sort of an, a like a, a like I want to adopt them into certain things so that I can teach them how to use these tools rather than keeping them from it in almost like a scarcity mindset. And then, and then eventually they do come across chat GP, GTP or whatever, and then they're going to just get smacked upside the head and be 10 years behind because I was, I was scared. What are your thoughts on that? No, I agree. That's what I said. I think getting them, getting them involved with it on a limited basis, make sure they're not using it to cheat or whatever, but yeah. getting them involved with it, I think it's going to be very, very important because right now, I mean, it just came out pretty much. AI has been around for a while. This feature just came out. And I feel like I'm behind. I'm trying to play catch up, trying to learn all the prompts and stuff. Right. And in the future, it's going to be like like using Facebook for them, for the younger generations. It's just going to be like using Google. It's not a big deal. And I think if you can if you can stay ahead of the curve, there's people people are going to make millions and millions of dollars with just this feature. Yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. All right, well, <clears throat> let's get into your story a little bit because you've you've got. I mean, we all have a story, but you've got one. I think that's going to keep people on the edge of their seat for a couple couple minutes here. So give us an idea of what you used to do, how you kind of got into your current business. Yeah. So like I said, I, w I was looking for stability. I was always attracted to the military and law enforcement, but my dad being ill, I decided to go law enforcement because I wanted to be close to family. Family's always been yeah. a big deal. Yeah. So I go into law enforcement and had an incredible time. I was the youngest cop in the agency. I was a cop at 19 years old. Couldn't wow. even buy bullets, right? So I was a cop at 19. Fast forward a couple of years later, I became the youngest detective. I was a robbery detective and I worked narcotics, did a lot of really cool stuff. Yeah. And I come out of narcotics. I go, I'm back on patrol. And I responded to a call that changed my life. Okay. Right? This now, just if we rewind just a little bit, remember I'm working narcotics. I'm, I'm doing kicking down doors with my team of guys, like yeah. do some really, really cool, crazy stuff. Right now I'm back in this monkey suit. And it's hot as heck outside. I'm sweating my butt off wearing this bulletproof vest. And I'm, I'm just not happy, right? I had my own office before. And now I'm just, I'm just not happy. I'm, I'm miserable. And I get this call. This lady calls in. She says, my husband's going out of town. I would like a deputy to come to my house and show me how I can make my house more secure so I can feel more comfortable while he's out of town. Now, do you think I wanted to respond to that call? Yeah, it sounds pretty, pretty low key, not yeah. a whole lot of action. <laughs> super, super boring. I'm like, you got to be freaking kidding me. I'm like day three back on the road. And I went on the road because it's the direction to get promoted, right? You can't. Anyways, right. so playing the game. And I'm like, I'm shaking my head, just like, man, this just sucks. And, but when I show up, I show up with a smile on my face. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. This is what I would do. I would put this here. I would do this, whatever. Give them my recommendations. I was there 15 minutes tops and she said something when I walked out is exactly what I needed to hear to flip the light bulb. She said, wow, the peace of mind you just gave me was worth every bit of $500. And to think the sheriff's office does this for free. And I was thinking to myself, that is the almost a week's worth of pay as a cop. I was here 15 minutes. Yeah. Whoa. How can I do this right. off the clock? Yeah. So I get back in the car and I start like looking for opportunities and Googling and I'm like all in, right? Because I, 500 bucks, that's a lot of money, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, something very, very vital I like to bring up here. The opportunities didn't just start showing up. I just had a different lens to see them. That's right. Because when I had that shift in mentality, I started seeing opportunities left and right. I mean, they were just that's slapping right. me in the face everywhere. That's right. So <laughs> fast forward a little bit. I come up with this device and it's an alarm system. It doesn't use any wires or sensors. It's about this big. You plug it in, it protects your entire house in under 30 seconds, every door, every window. It's pretty cool technology. It was initially developed by the military for their safe homes. And I basically took it, got it monitored and, and turned it into a home security system. But I needed about $100,000 to make it work. And I was a cop. I didn't have $10,000, much less. <laughs> right? So... I found an investor I wanted to work with, very, very successful guy, casino owner, and, and just tons of online marketing type stuff, sure. really look up to the guy. And I pitched him and he told me no. And I pitched him and he told me no. And I called him, I, I pitched him probably 30 times. Yeah. And then he finally said, okay, Mitchell, send the product to this list of people. He gave me a list of like seven people. They were product testers and advisors. He said, if they all agree and give me the thumbs up, I'll invest. 
So I didn't have a patent or anything. I took out all the screws and I super glued them in because I didn't know this guy, right? And I was like, oh, he's going to steal my idea. Like he needs my idea. Yeah. So I super glue the screws in and I send them off to these people. About a week and a half goes by and they all give the thumbs up. And I'm like, it's in the bag. It's going down. Yeah. I got this money coming. And I call him and he tells me no. Oh. What you told me, yeah. he's like, you know what I told you, Mitchell, and I apologize. He said, I like the product and I like you a lot, Mitchell. You got a lot of drive, but he said, I can't break my number one rule. I said, well, tell me what it is so I can change it for the next guy, right? Yeah. And he says, I learned a long time ago never to invest in someone who has no skin in the game. I give you this money and you flop. You're still a cop. You literally lost nothing. And I lost my money. And he said, yeah, 100 grand is not a lot of money, but still, that's the right way to do business. And I'm like, oh, man, I had no, I had no, no comeback. What do you say yeah, to that? Yeah. yeah so I'm like, you're right. You know, I got time into it, whatever. So I go home that night and I did not sleep. Like I just laid there and I had this thought, I'm going to quit my job. And then I'm going to call him after I quit. Yep. And, uh, then he'll, he'll have to take me. Right. <laughs> So I lay in bed and I'm just like up all night. I got a couple hours of sleep, praying about it, thinking about it. My wife wakes up and I tell her I'm going to quit my job. And at first she's like, you're going to what? Yeah. Wait a second, champ. <laughs> yeah. But this is another thing I like to point out. She had that initial shock, but then she was quickly to say, okay, whatever you think is best, whatever you want. And the reason is, men, let me tell you something. She knows because I've instilled faith in her that I will always provide. Yeah, if you yeah. tell me in order to pay my mortgage, I got to dig a trench from central Florida to Georgia, I might not make it, but I'll start digging. Right. And because she knows that's who I am, she said, sure, because she knows that I would have made something happen. Totally. So I went to work and I gave my two week notice. Well, it's the policy of the sheriff's office. They let you go same day. Yeah. And yeah, they don't want you to take any information and so forth and so on. Right. So I turn in my badge and, you know, I was a cop in 19. I was handing away my identity. That's what yeah. I learned. And no badge. Are you kidding me? Like, I'm not a cop anymore. It was just a really bad, a really bad feeling for me. Yeah. So I'm heading home and nothing but my pants. Cause they took everything. <laughs> and, uh, I called the guy and I say, Hey Ben, I, uh, well, it's funny. He answered the phone. He says, yes, Mitchell. Cause now he's getting, uh, yep. Yep. And I said, I want to, he you... answered. Yeah. He answered. He answered. And uh, he said, I said, I want to let you know, I quit my job. And he said, you what? And I said, well, you said I had no skin in the game. I have no way to prove to you that I'm serious. So I, I had to quit my job. And he's like, son of a bitch. I won't tell you exactly what he said, but he's like, dude. And he said, well, if you can sell me, you can sell an effing alarm system. So whatever. And he, and he cut the check. Wow. And that was how I got into entrepreneurship. The security guard company was actually supposed to, I was going to wear a security guard uniform and work little side gigs. And that was going to be my supplemental income until the alarm took off. Yeah. With entrepreneurship, you got to duck and dot. You got to be able to take it as it comes, right? That's right. That's right. The security guard company exploded and became my main source of income. Wow. And that's that's kind of how I transitioned into entrepreneurship. Well, I mean, <clears throat> bro, you took us left and took us right, even with just a couple minutes there. I, and I knew it would be, obviously. I, you know, I, I, I read our notes before the show. I was excited. Um, yeah. Bro, what can we deposit? What can you deposit? in the entrepreneur listening right now of you just said, you know what? Okay. I'm done. I'm all in. That's a decision mm -hmm. that you and I have not only made once, but again and again and again and again. And so even if they've made it once, what can you deposit in them right now? Like that, what, what is that juice where they, cause they're gonna have to keep doing it over and over. Right. Well, the initial is the hardest. And I tell you, I thought I was a cop at 19. I had no experience other than law enforcement. I could yeah. shoot. I could write reports. None of that really, I thought in my head, transferred over to entrepreneurship. So what am I going to do? I'm a cop. I'll always be a cop. I'm stuck. I felt that I had this mentality like I'm stuck. Right now, there may be someone listening who's a mechanic, a doctor, a nurse, a, a paramedic. They want to go into entrepreneurship. And they say, all I know is this. That's not true. Right. And once you realize that a lot of the stuff that you do know does transfer to entrepreneurship, and if it doesn't, you can learn it. Right. Yeah. yeah. Once you make that initial leap, 
the the second, the third, the fourth, it does get easier, but it's taking that initial leap. You have to do it and you have to have the confidence in yourself to see it through. Yeah. You know, you said something kind of referencing people who maybe haven't made that jump yet. And I think that that's, that's accurate for a lot of listeners. They've made that jump, but here's where they're at, which is just exactly what you just said. They're a tradesman. They're the individual, like they still, they're the cop in their mind, but they're just, they're running a cop business. They're an electrician. They're a, a marketing guy. They're a website builder. They're a fill in the blank. <clears throat> they're a concrete guy. And, and, but what they don't believe that they are is a businessman or an mm -hmm. entrepreneur, right? right? It's the same exact thing that you're talking about is like, no, actually those things translate. Yeah. You've been providing a service. You already, you already left the job. You, you made it a big deal. You're starting to do your own thing now. Maybe even got a guy or two on your team or, or, you know, a couple of gals or whatever. And it's like, look, the next level of running a business, building a team, like doing the business thing, you're going to have to come out of the cop hat, but you still take some of those things with you. It's still, and, and, and even if it doesn't translate, guess what? Mitchell says we can learn it. <laughs> right, that's it. Give us a couple of practicals on how have you learned the business side? I mean, obviously there's a couple of super easy things, but what, what, what have you done? Well, this is vital here. I don't know everything about this business, right? We do, we do a lot in revenue every year. And if it was solely up to me, this thing would probably crash and burn, right? I can't do it all myself and I don't want to. I have no desire to, right? I, I, uh, you tell me I have to deal with all the taxes and all, all that crap. It's going to get messed up, right? <laughs> it's, I don't yeah, want yeah. it. So I have someone else that does that, right? So you have to, when you're, you have to first identify where you're weak and where you're strong, right? Take those weak points and find people that are better at it than you and then put them into place. And then once you get that smooth, then you take the stuff that, that you're good at, but you don't want to do. And you get someone for that job. And then you take the stuff that you're good at and you like to do, and you get someone for that job so you can go out and do the next thing in life. But uh, it's, it's that transition of getting people, because I was the same way. I wanted, I wanted everything. I had to take control of everything. And your business will stay small and, and your impact is going to be entire, very, very, very small if you try and run the whole show. You got to put yeah. people in play. I mean, I, I couldn't help but <clears throat> use this play on words here with a, you know, securing a home or even an event or someone that you're providing security services to. Yeah. Isn't that what you do first? You look for the weak points, right? The entry points, you look for what's easiest, you know, you secure those and then you look for, you know, the heart, you know, that this is, this is how you do security. Also, it's how you build a business, right? It's hard yeah. for people to yeah. kind of follow along that, that line sometimes because we get stuck. We get stuck with just doing the same thing over and over and over getting around other individuals, listening to a podcast, joining a mastermind, you know, paying for a coach, going to an event, like whatever, all those things, you know, some of those things that I'm sure both of you and I have, have done YouTube. There's freaking YouTube, man. Whether you're watching this on YouTube or you're just searching for how to come on, like it's all there, right? And soon to be on chat GPT, right? <laughs> chat GPT knows, I guarantee it. Exactly. Exactly. So, all right, well, let's get into some practicals here. You've had, a, you've had a lot of experience, and even in a short time, I want to know of a good decision that you made in the business that you can share. You can look back and go, okay, this is the one, and that led us to, a, mm, I do that one over and over again. Yeah, so the biggest decision that I've made that grew the company, it, it kind of goes back to what we just said, is putting people in place. Okay. I hired a supervisor. He's our lieutenant now or of, of this area, right? And uh, because we got to a point where we were like this, we weren't growing yeah. because we had so many employees that I'm trying to, I'm trying to keep track of all the employees. Someone's grandma died for the fifth time, right? Someone got COVID for the 80th time and they're, you know, whatever. And they're, they're calling out them. The customers aren't happy. So I'm done with the customers. I'm done with employees and I'm spread th so thin that I'm not doing what I'm good at, which is getting more yeah. business. Right. That's what I, that's what I'm strong at. I enjoy negotiating. I enjoy marketing. I enjoy speaking to the customers and I can't do it because the business has got me going everywhere. That's right. So we hired a Lieutenant, which was very scary because this is, this is back a little bit. And his salary was basically the profit. I mean, the, the, we, the, so that's good. Yeah. So it's like, I'm going back in my head. I'm like, if I hire this guy, like there is no profit margin. If something bad happens, we're going to be in big trouble. Yep. And, uh, but we did it. And what we saw was as soon as we hired him and my phone stopped ringing with employees and complaints and issues, 
and I would just show up to work every day and focus on making money, the business went just like that. And so it's, it's kind of two parts there, taking a little bit of a leap of faith when you have to. That's right. An educated leap of faith, right? Calculated. And then also putting the people in place to do the stuff that you don't necessarily need to be doing. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <clears throat> I hope, I hope that the listener is taking notes, not even just paying attention, but taking notes. I've heard, you know, this general circumstance said time and time again, but to reiterate the points that you've made here for the listener is that you noticed a stall, number one. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes, if you can just be aware enough to notice the stall, it usually is you. <laughs> right. yeah. You are the bottleneck, my friend, I promise. And so figure out how to undo the bottleneck. And some, and that that's tough sometimes because as business owners, we're capable. We're extremely capable, actually, a lot of times. And so hiring someone else to do the thing that we're probably already doing feels weird, right. but for you. And then on top of that, the second layer is that the, 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 you know, the faith aspect of going, well, if something doesn't go right here, this is not good. But the simplicity of it, think about what you just said. So here's this for the listener. He said, I had all these tasks that were keeping me from getting more business, AKA the stall. Okay. So if I hire somebody to take these tasks, what does that do? It frees up right. my time to go get more business. So I should be able to cover three times, four times over what this is going to cost as long as you're betting on yourself. Once again, this is going all in again. You did it again. Here you are. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You gotta have the self-confidence to make it happen for yeah. sure. Absolutely. Okay. What about a bad choice? What'd you do that just don't want to repeat it and we can learn well, from it. You know, bad choices are what stepping stones towards success, right? And I that's didn't, right. that's right away. So I got a, quite a few stepping stones here, but the number one that I think holds up a lot of people was what other people think. You know, mm -hmm. I, when I left law enforcement, I had my best friend call me up. He, and and he said, Mitchell, what are you doing? You've been a cop 12 years. You only need a few more years. You get a full retirement. Dude, you can do that after you retire. You'll still be young. You got in at 19. You have plenty of time to, to start your own security thing and be an entrepreneur. Dude, you're an idiot. What about insurance? What about your, you know, blah, 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 blah. You got to think about your family. That's right. And, uh, and you were. Yeah. Yeah. A lot family. of people realize that. Yeah. I was thinking about my family and just with a different mentality. And it held me back a lot. For an example, when I, and it's funny to say this now because it's, it's just not me, but looking back when I quit my job and I started my own business, I didn't even want to post on social media about my own business. Cause I'm like, yeah. oh, what are people going to think? They're going to think I'm a loser. Oh, everyone's an entrepreneur nowadays. I, I, I didn't, I was worried about what other people thought, yeah. which is so ridiculous. Yeah. And that holds back so many people. I think that's like one of the biggest hurdles for most people. Yeah, I'm going to ask you how you overcame that because the reality of it is that your business, even at that point before it had started, your your business actually started with the free trip over to, you know, Susie, Susie Jones's house that you helped secure her house from the sheriff's department. And even that was free. And so it, like there was major value and that's, that's the answer. But, but for you, like, how have you been able to re remind yourself? That like what I'm doing is actually extremely valuable. So then therefore it kind of builds up my confidence and I post online or I, you know, go after a big contract that maybe makes me a little nervous. Like, how do you remind yourself of those things? Well, and maybe this isn't the, the answer you're looking for. It, it wasn't nothing motivational, transformational or exciting. Yeah. It was, I'm going to be in a lot of trouble if I don't make money now. Right. I, when I quit my job as a career, that money that the investor gave me, I didn't make one, I didn't take one penny. It all went to the business. I didn't make one single red cent. So all I had, I was living on my savings and my savings was not impressive. So I, I knew I had about a month and a half, two months of bills covered, and then I'm, I'm in trouble. So yeah, I pondered the idea of what are people going to think and stuff like that for a very short time. But then it got down to the fact of, I don't have time to worry about that because if not, I'm going to lose my house, right? So yeah. I think, and, and time and time and time again, I perform the best when my back's against the wall. And it's like, dude, and I think Grant Cardone, I think is, I think it's him who says it. If you want to continue to make money and be successful, you got to make yourself broke, right? 
And uh, it's an interesting concept. I don't know if he means it completely the way it's said, but you have to put yourself against the wall in order to, to make it happen sometimes. Yeah, yeah. He means it exactly as you took it, which is you put yourself against the wall, <clears throat> take your money, put it into an asset, get rid of it. Right. Force yeah. yourself to go drum up the business. Don't, don't, don't get soft sitting on 100,000, million, 5 million, you know, go put it to use and, and then go use those skill sets. So you, you took it the right way. You're right. Those moments that we have to keep ourselves hungry is, is probably the, the, the bigger topic here. And, and then eventually it becomes more purpose driven, your family legacy. And, but, but right on spot on the money early on, it's about survival and how can you, and so and that's actually the exact depiction that I wanted to give to the listener because everybody can relate to that going like, well, if I have no money <laughs> and my family's at home and the mortgages do, I'm willing to do anything, right? Dig a ditch to Georgia, whatever. You fill in the blank for me. I'll do it because it's my family, right? Yeah. And so when you have, when you can hold on to like that feeling and going like, oh yeah, I agree with you, Chaz. I agree with you, Mitchell. But later on down the road, when you got a little bit of money, when you got a little bit of, that's harder to hold on to it going like, well, I'm willing to do this or willing to do that. And so obviously, a, you know, a cheat code to what you just said is invest and get rid of it. But it's still the same mindset. You got to be able to remind yourself, you know, of the next level and why you want to do it and put your, put your back against the wall. So thank you for that. Yeah, we just, an example of what we just did actually just two weeks ago, three weeks ago, we opened up a second location in Tampa. We, we got an office and everything. I got a whole office down there that's completely empty. <laughs> I'm paying on it. I, and I don't have one customer in that area. Yeah, not yet. But I'm going to. Yep. I'm going to have a lot of them, right? And, uh, but nice. now I got this in the back of my head, man, you're paying, you got a light, light bill, you got, you know, you got bills down there, make it happen. That's just another way to do it once you've seen success is to put yourself and open up another location or whatever it may be. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of uh, times where we, <laughs> we do those moves and later down the line, we look and we go, wow, I was really glad I did that. And I've made a few of those where you're like, oh, yeah, you know, yeah. maybe that was a little bit, you know, but, but even still, like you're pushing so hard yeah. because of that mindset. Like I can think of, I mean, I, 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 <laughs> In my 20s, I went from zero to seven edible arrangements franchises within four years, 65 employees, millions in sales. I had no understanding of business before that. <laughs> in fact, I asked the business broker if he could help me understand the PL. He was like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's sit down and do that, please. Like, I should help you. <laughs> That's right. So the point being though is that I look back and I'm like, mm, I had to close one of them because that was a bad choice. A couple hundred thousand dollars just whoop, sh gone. Yeah. You know, wife told me not to, you know, but <laughs> the, <laughs> regardless, I was pushing so hard on all these angles. It's like, would I go back and do the, the exact way? Well, you know, maybe make it make a couple of adjustments, but I would push just as hard. And that's the point that we're talking about. Right. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. I want to go over to the speed round here. I'm going to ask you some questions from a different angle in your business. You obviously got a couple of different, you know, offers and stuff that you have, but the reality of it is, is that there's measurable trackable KPIs. If you can only pick one of them, what is it? Out of all the services I provide? Yeah, just your entire business. All the things that are flowing in, you can track one thing. What is it? Um, probably our unarmed security guard services. Okay. What inside of that? What's the, what's the KPI? Is it number of clients? Is it renewals? Like what, what, what are you, what are you tracking? What are you thinking about? Yeah. So the, the cool thing about the industry is you don't have to have a ton of clients to see a lot of success because it's such a high ticket item. Oh, right? sure. Yeah. So you have, you have a contract where it requires, you know, five officers 24 seven, that is a pretty substantial contract. So you don't need a lot of contracts, but once you get a good foundation, like you said, the renewals, the, the getting, getting the customer service and building relationships with them so that they re-sign year after year, then it just becomes a building block and, and it continues to grow as long as you're keeping the customer happy. Yeah. Yeah. That client experience speaks to most businesses. And I think that it's probably underrated as far as like the, the focus, like if your focus is the client experience, usually the rest kind of figures itself out. Now, Coming from sales guys, like you already said, you're a sales guy, I'm, I, you know, decades of, of experience. It's like, you still got to go, you know, still got to find new clients. They still got to fill the pipeline. You got to do all those things. But 
you know, that client experience will prove that you have a good business. Would you like yeah. to add anything to that? Yeah, my well, my goal with them is to have them we have such a tight relationship to where it's like a hey bro kind of relationship, like a totally. like a friendship. Because yeah. if you can do that, then the odds of them canceling or getting rid of your service are almost deplete, you know, as long as you're providing a good service. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I think I think, you know, to just translate that, you know, for the listener in business, you know. I have the same language. Like <clears throat> immediately I'm like my bearded brother from another mother. Like it, right. it, it's not that it's not that I need you to be my friend. Although I have built some incredible friendships through stuff like this. Right. But when you come with like an, a, like a genuine approach of like, I want to serve you. I want to do what's right. Add value. Even in a situation like this, where we're just talking on a podcast, let alone if we're in a contract and I'm actually like paid to bring value. Like if you just deliver <laughs> on a, just a high level it's going to automatically go there because it you know the cup overfloweth you know th their cup from you filling it up they're going to be like wow dude like and it immediately turns into bro or this friendship or this this you know another level of relationship because you've done what you said you were going to do plus 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 you know what i mean right yeah absolutely good stuff man okay so what about a book or a resource that you've used to to grow what do you like well, can I do a shameless plug here? Yeah, come on now. So I wrote this book, Mentally yeah. Tough Society. Love so it. I'm working on my second book called The Peaceful Savage. And uh, that one, I, I really, really want to get it in the hands of people. So it'll be, I'll be releasing it here within the next month or so. You can find out more information, psoath.com, peacefulsavageoath.com. But as far as books go, so I'm, yeah. I'm obsessed with books and I hate reading, right? Funny. Amen. But I cannot stand reading, but I, I make myself do at least minimal one book a month. Now, if I come across a book that really intrigues me, I might do two or three a month, but I, I make myself, that's the minimal one book a month. And there's been so many incredible books. I'm trying to think of one off the top of my head right now, and I can't think of the name of it, but it's it, Alter Ego. Alter Ego. Okay. Okay. So if you, it's not a book that's really talked about a lot and I can't think of the author's name right now. Okay, we'll find it. But Google it. That book right there is incredible. I, I've read a lot of books and that book right there really, really helped me a lot. Okay, awesome. Yeah, well, and, and to just take two seconds on your shameless plug. First off, Peaceful Savage sounds like, you know, I, I don't know. Like, <laughs> I just like awakened... Like right. everything inside of me of like, yes, you know? So anyway, I just, I just appreciate the fact that you've already done this. You know, the one book that you've written, of course, we'll put the, that in the show notes that you're working on another one that inspires me, man. I know I got a couple books in me and that just hasn't, that just hasn't happened yet. So you are already, even just by mentioning your books, that in itself is a resource for people to go, dang, <clears throat> if he can do it. I can do it. That's it. Yeah. That's it's just, it's just the way. It's just the way an entrepreneur goes, and and especially if I can get a transferred piece of courage, which is just what you gave me as well. So I appreciate that. I got a question for you about family. We talked about this briefly before we hit the recording button, so I'm curious, and we might stay here for a minute, especially given our legacy conversation earlier. But as a business owner, I already mentioned I hate the word balance. I think it's ridiculous. There's this obsession that we have about business, about our thing, right? Or about the widget, about the, the building, whatever it is. And what I have found is that if I can obsess about the building blocks of my family, my children, my marriage, legacy, then it, it, it all kind of comes together. And I'm, and I'm now just a builder, right? Like I get to get as excited with my children as I do with building my business. But for you practically, like how have you been able to operate that with your wife, with your kids and your business kind of all together? Because everybody's listening right now is dealing with the same dynamic that you and I are. Right. In the beginning, it was ruthless. <laughs> I'm be completely honest with you because I had no employees. I landed a couple contracts. I had no one to work them, so I was working them, and I was never home, yeah. never home. And uh, it caused issues. Like my wife wasn't happy about it. I'm working. I'm working during the day in the office, or even at home before I had an office. I'm working on the phone and talking. I I don't have time. I can't do that right now. I'm on this Zoom or sending this email. And it was boom, 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 boom. And then I would change and go work as a security guard at night, come home, sleep for two hours and do it all over again. And it wasn't easy. And I had to 
eventually I got out of that. And now it, you know, once you, you put in the work, I think in that initial stage, everyone's, everyone talks about time freedom and yeah, that's yeah. the goal. And I'm blessed. I have time freedom now that my business almost runs in complete automation. I barely touch it nowadays, but it wasn't always like that. Right. It's like, it's like the new, it's like the someone who had, they have no money in the bank and they're talking about passive income. Right. Man, you need to get active income first and then we'll talk about passive income. You know what I'm saying? That's, right. that's like, right. I know you want the time freedom, but you got to put in the work. That's so right. in the beginning, if, if I know a lot of people listening to the show are not, not necessarily just starting out, but if they are just starting out, don't be time freedom isn't top of your priority list right now. Putting in the yeah. work this now, if you've been in business and you got some good flow of income, then it's time to take the next leap. You know, if you got some money coming in, get your time freedom, make it happen, hire the right people. Yeah. Yeah. It's good because if you don't, and you stay in that warrior stage too long, then it causes problems. And, yeah, and I can speak to that. Them. Oh yeah. Huge. I mean, my, my, <laughs> my <laughs> wife has reminded me on multiple occasions of like, uh, excuse me. <laughs> yeah, you're in mind both. Yeah. And so, and, and I don't know, I, I almost said, I don't know if that'll ever change. I, I don't want to limit us by saying, that we'll never get it. <laughs> I just think that we need to change our perspective. And that's, and that's really the reason for the question. And, you know, later this year, we're going to pull off this, this new thing that we're calling a family mastermind. We're going to cruise to Bermuda for a week and do this marriage and family and business kind of like all together. And awesome. because it's, because it's real, it's real. Like those are real conversations that I have with my wife. If we're going like, Hey dude, <laughs> like, uh, can you, can you, can you not please, you know? And I, and she supports me. She encourages me just like yours. Like, I trust you. Like, let's go for it. But I can't burn that at the same time too. Like I got to honor that. And so, you know, a lot of times it's the stuff that, that we know that we need to do. That's the most hard anyway. And it's tough to, you know, that's why these people talk about balance. It's just like, psh, we just need to be obsessed. We need, we need to go after it, you know? And yeah. so putting it on your calendar, all those things, even just like what you just said of, of buying, buying your time, growing your team, all those things, super practical. Okay. One last question for you. All right. If you could whisper in the younger Mitchell's ear, what would you say? Start now, do it now. You know, when I, I, I speak a lot now, I absolutely love speaking. I love sharing my message. When I was in high school in ninth grade, I, I said, I told everyone, I want to be a motivational speaker. That's what I want, right? I want to encourage people. I want to inspire people. And I did not start speaking until last year. Why? Because I didn't think I had a story. Yeah, exactly. Start now. Yeah, that's, that's the thing, man. I wish I would have started my security company 20 years ago. I wish I would have started speaking 20 years ago, whatever it may be. But, uh, well, 10 years ago, I'm not quite old enough for that, but... You know, I wish I would have started it sooner. And, yeah. and so many things that hold you back. We talked about that, what people think, my limiting mindset, whatever it is. But yeah, yeah that's what it would be. Yeah, that's awesome, man. You have done absolutely the thing that I wanted to do here today, which was transfer courage to the listener. You've done that in such excellence. I've enjoyed our conversation. How can the listener find you? Whether maybe potentially they need security services. How can they find you there? But then also maybe they're just a, they're, they're a business owner. They want to pick your brain. Maybe they need to hire you for a speaking service. How can they find you? Yeah. So for my security company is intactsecurity.com. That's the letter N is in November, T-A-C-T security.com. We cover the entire state of Florida. And then our executive protection stuff, our bodyguard stuff, we go anywhere in the world. As far as contacting me directly, I'm on social media, Mitchell R. Tucker, or my website is mitchellrtucker.com. If you're interested in hearing about the book, peaceful savage there's a one minute oath psoath.com you listen to the oath if you vibe with it if you align with what the oath is then you can actually sign your name your your name will be listed along with hundreds of other people who already signed the oath and then we'll, the book is released we'll we'll notify you that's awesome yeah well the listener would be silly not to take you up on at least one of those to be able to connect with a guy like you would would take their network to another level. So, because that's how I feel, man. I feel like I just gained a long lost brother and I appreciate wow. just you coming with such just passion, really just conviction actually probably is a better word. So you just bring a level of, of um, got to get it done. So I just appreciate that. Blessings on you, your family, your business, your speaking, your book, everything. Thank you for being here. We appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you, brother. 
Thank you for listening to Gathering the Kings today. I hope that you were able to pull out a few nuggets to go apply into your business right away. More importantly, though, I hope that you're realizing that it takes more to be successful than just being by yourself, doing it all on your own, carrying the weight all by yourself. What I have realized, not only in my own journey from multiple businesses and multiple different industries, and now interviewing literally over two or 300 other very successful seven, eight, and nine figure business owners is that it's tough to do it alone. And so Gathering the Kings literally exists to bring together successful entrepreneurs. In fact, we are putting together 1,000 kings, specifically who are grateful, but not done. We're intentionally assembling kings who fight tooth and nail for their business, family, and communities. And here's what we believe, that in the pursuit of excellence in those areas, that it ignites within us the responsibility to govern power and forge a lasting legacy. So if that relates and, and resonates with you, and you know that you need people around you, sharp, qualified, other very successful business owners, I want you to go to gatheringthekings.com. I want you to take a look at what we're doing and see if it makes sense for you to be part of our pursuit to 1,000 Kings. Talk soon.